Good evening. Welcome on into the evening edition of From Day One. We'll see if the plea works through as we conclude the case from the afternoon. I'm having a hard time believing that he's telling me the truth about this. Ms. Weidling, can you just put that UPS up? Uh, overhead. I say something. I'll let you. If your counsel no. believes that should speak, then I. I apologize. The thing did not stop. So give me a moment. Let me re it real quick. All right. Here we go. It's not the case. He actually had the license plate of the vehicle prior to it turning on to Superior. Hence, realistically, there is no reason whatsoever for him to have continued. There is no reason whatsoever for him to have continued up superior behind that truck. Now, if somebody and counsel, I will give you an opportunity to address the court on that. And like I said, I'm not here and I explained to mom, I, I it's not my province regarding the charge. My province is to meet out the sentence with what's in front of me. And again, I will give an opportunity for a response, but I can tell you where the court is at this point. The court at this point is of the opinion and that Mr. Torre saw this. When he talks about the kicking up of dust and other things, the only place in that area that's going to happen is basically at those tracks. It's not going to happen on the turn off of here on River Drive onto Superior. You're not paid. And, you know, and I'll just say it, I don't, when I look at all of this, I'm having a hard time believing that he's telling me the truth about this. Ms. Weidling, can you just put that UPS up that overhead? Can I say something? I'll let you, if your counsel no. believes that should speak, then I will let you speak. But I'm ready. Can you blow that up or you, you're locked? Yeah, I just need it closer to the That's good. Right. Uh, yep. Yeah, right there. At the very bottom of the screen, you're going to see the turn from Huron Park, Huron River Drive, onto um, onto Superior. Up top of the screen. Uh, sir, sir. You will not disrupt these proceedings. I do not want to kick you out, but you are not going to disrupt these proceedings. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see the railroad tracks. And if you look at, I think the first, let me just 
if you look down from the railroad tracks off of Superior, that first street coming off, which would be as you're looking at the screen to the left, that's first street. From there, you can see that there is a clear shot to that intersection with the railroad tracks. If Mr. Torres is there, he has a clear shot to that whole area. When you also look at it just in terms of his timing of the calls, the other calls that are coming in, he he can't not be in that area and see what My apologies, Judge Simpson. Give me just one second. We did lost the game. We will continue with the case in audio form while we get the game back up. Happens. Because the other calls come in shortly thereafter, and they're traveling north from the Gettys um, area, traveling southbound on Superior. They see it. So again, I here, you know, I don't. I, I'm not here to worry about what's charged, what's not charged. I have to meet out the best sentence I can with what I have. And I will let you know, and counsel, I will give you an opportunity if you want to somehow or another speak with your client prior to the court imposing sentence. But I do believe that jail time is appropriate given what I see. I can't in giving that I can't bring back these young ladies. I, and I told the parents, I can't do that. But I certainly can do the best that I can to make sure something occurs. If I believed that Mr. Torres was not present, that it was as it was portrayed to this court, a circumstance where he could not have seen it, that he would have been so far down on Superior that he wouldn't have seen the railroad track, then that's where I would land. And I would have no problem landing with that and justifying it. I can't, based upon his own statements, justify that as being true. He had to see it. Hey guys, he's what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. The video that you guys are about to see is me pressuring one of my stores that I that train. Listen to me, the automotive space. And that he's at first, and it's a clear shot to those railroads. All right, I did not expect that to come up as I was getting the game back up. So I'm going to drop it back to before that other audio track came in. And let's pick up Judge Simpson. And I would have no problem landing with that and justifying it. I can't, based upon his own statements, justify that as being true. He, he had to see it. He's telling me he's two to three cars behind them that he's following them and that he's at first and it's a clear shot to those railroad tracks. I, if somebody wants to tell me how I can come to a different conclusion, then please tell me that. But I don't, I, ha, I can take into account in terms of sentencing, whether or not a defendant is being truthful with the court in terms of what they're saying. And I will be blunt, I'm just a plain talker. I don't believe that he is. Counsel, if prior to your, Mr. Torres is, I, I don't know that you can see him or not. He really wants to make a statement. I will arrange, counsel, I know you don't want him to. If you want to, since you're not here, you want to talk to him, I will arrange to get him on a Zoom and get you guys into a breakout room so you can talk. No, Judge, that's fine. I'm ready to make a comment when you're ready to hear. I don't need to oh, for us to speak. Go ahead. Sure. Judge, um, with all due respect, this is wildly inappropriate. For you to be doing an investigation on your own, 
for you so, to be pulled on, up. Counsel, counsel, go counsel, ahead, Judge. Counsel, you're the boss. Counsel, yes, stop. Stop a moment. I think I acknowledged that. I'm not here doing an investigation. The question is, is what was represented to this court is that he could not have seen it, that he was not following that. Anything that I have here is not an investigation. All I did was listen to the 911 and read the police report. So in that case, if you think that's inappropriate, then fine. You can go ahead with your statement and then I will proceed to my sentence. Right. In addition, Judge, you pulled up a map and you said that it's impossible to see or that it's possible to see where the accident was without actually being at the scene viewing it. There was no trial. There was no any opportunity for the defense to present you with uh, counter evidence or anything like that, Judge. It, Counsel, it, it, you wanna, I what do you want to give me? What do you want to give I don't me? Wanna, I'm, I don't want to give you anything. What because do you want to give me? No, Judge, Counsel, if you're going to say I'm being unfair, what do you want to give me? Judge, I want to because tell you that I, that I don't that believe you to be considering court, anything that will occur after that. What you represented to this court, and I realize you're advocating for your client about him being someplace further from that scene, it, it's not true. It's his own statements. These are not anything where I went out there and I'm looking at something or I'm doing whatever. It's just placement. He's saying he's at first. I just listened to the tape. I didn't do anything. I didn't go out there and investigate, talk to any witnesses, do anything like that. I did that and looked at a map. That's all I did. Right. Judge, so if you want none to give of me this, something, counsel, I'll, you can come here two hours late. Give me what you want to give me. Judge, I don't believe you should be considering anything after the fact that of the initial accident. He, he's being sentenced for failure to stop at a PD accident. It has nothing to do with what he did afterwards. It's completely inappropriate what for the court to be- What do you mean what he did afterwards? After the accident, when he was initially rear-ended, that's what he pled to, failing to stop at that accident. It's not failing to stop at the accident that, that the girls were involved in. It's failure to stop at the accident where he was rear-ended. Ms. Reiser agrees. Wishes, if your client, knowing what I'm going to do, wishes to withdraw his plea, I will consider that motion. Judge, I would also ask that you recuse yourself at this point. Denied. Understood. And I can, if, if you wouldn't mind uh, allowing me to speak with Mr. Torres, I, I'm, my guess is he's going to withdraw his plea. I'm sorry? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to speak with Mr. Torres to make sure this is going to happen, but my guess is he will withdraw his plea. Can we set up a breakout room for Mr. Torres in signing on to Zoom in one of the conference rooms? Mr. Torres, we're gonna put you into one of the conference rooms out there. We're gonna put that machine into a into a breakout room and put your counsel into a breakout room so you guys can talk. Court will stand in recess. All right. Does this come back? It's still not done? Oh, good Lord. Let me go. Well, that was intense. <laughs> now I know why people do that. It's it's still it's still private. So apparently he's talking to him. Um, I understand the defense attorney's argument, but it was inartfully uh, made. The problem he's got, he's like, "Oh, judge, I don't want you uh, doing an investigation and 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 taking into account things that he didn't plead to." Okay, fine. Fine, I get where you're coming from. The judge is saying, "We got it. We have." I, I'm not familiar with this case, but I, I, I'm, I'm frankly picking up from you guys. But what, what I'm gathering is we have some sort of road rage incident, and then he's chasing these people. They end up getting in an accident. 
judge is factoring that into a sentencing where it's usually be like failure to stop at an accident or something. That's probably, I don't know, class A misdemeanor or whatever. I, I don't know how they classify, but it, it probably you can get jail time for it, but 99 times out of 100, you wouldn't, you'd get a fine if nobody died in the event. But since they did here and he's eating statements, victim impact statements from the mothers, he's, he's viewing the sentence, sentencing differently, which makes all the sense in the world. The problem the defense attorney, I understand logically what, where the defense attorney is going, saying, look, there was an accident where, they, where they, there was contact between these two vehicles. Then there was, so there's two accidents. He pled guilty to failure to stop at the initial accident. And now you're sentencing him basing, based, based upon another accident. That's the defense argument. It makes some sense, but you can't, but he came in like a bull in the china shop telling the judge it's all improper. The judge, the judge's problem is he feels like he's being lied to based upon the evidence before him, not an independent investigation. The only thing independent is, I guess, he looked, he pulled up a, a map, but uh, the map was really for illustrative purposes. Judge is familiar with the area. How I'm familiar with the area. I went to the University of Michigan. It's right there. I've, I've rode on this river. I, I know what's going on. So it's not like he needed, he, it's not like he needed that to know. But what he's saying, the most damning thing to me just right off the top, and I'm not familiar with this case, is he's lying to the dispatcher about his location. And he's lying to the dispatcher about his location because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, um, he, he doesn't want them to know that, that he, that he views the second accident. Because he's not, he knows he's complicit in it, that he's chasing people over a road rage incident. That's what's going on. But this is not this is not the way to come out a judge. You can make the same point without without getting accusatory with the judge. And if you want to, and if you want to make that, that's quite a technical argument, and you can peel it. And there's there's lots of things you can do, but you're not going to shout down a judge mid sentence with uh, with grieving mothers observing. In that map, that, that's not going to happen. That is simply not going to happen. All right, let me let me see here. Should we hang out and, and see what happens? So the, the, this guy's going to withdraw his plea. Is my guess, but it's not going to make any difference because <laughs> he's going to be convicted. He's going to be convicted, and frankly, I haven't done this stuff for ages, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But it, it, off the top of my head, yeah, the state could bring more charges if they want to, based on this. And given the fact that they're fatalities, it'd be easy to do. I don't know if withdraw. I, I, you might, you might eat a jail sentence here and be, and, be, and move on with your life. It's not going to be huge. I, I I don't know if I don't know if I'd tell my client to withdraw a plea here. But it's not my area. He you know he I, the argument that the defense attorney is making is logical and I and I understand it and I would make the same argument but I would I would have made the same argument in a different way. That, that not now you've got a real now you now you're now you're accusing the, uh, the judge effectively of misconduct here which I don't see <sighs> it's like the old saying if you're gonna take a shot at the king you you, you can't miss you're gonna if you're gonna throw allegations like this at, at, at a judge you you better be right because if not, I don't think he is here. If not, you've got that same judge sentencing your client. And they're not in a good mood. (laughs) 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I actually have no idea. I'm just I'm just, just talking out my backside here. I have no idea. Th- th- those are those are my thoughts. Those are thoughts of a uh, civil litigator in another state. <laughs> they are absolutely useless. Absolutely useless thoughts. Ah, uh, there we have it. But it, but it almost it almost sounded like something, didn't it? Let me see here. Well, I, I just don't know how long we're going to do this. What I envision is going on right now is is uh, is that they're having a uh, they're having a cage match right there in the courtroom. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Well, I, I don't know. How... The picture behind me is straight. Everyone, obviously, they'll all, you, they'll all continue to say, the picture behind me is straight. It's just the angle of the camera or whatever. I, I could I could move it so it looks looks right to you on camera, but then it would be then it'd be goofy in my office. All right. Well, well, I got nothing here. Well, I I mean, I hate to, I hate to leave you guys hanging, but I also don't, I don't know if I want to just. Keep everyone sitting around here when I don't have anything new. Is, is there something else? Is there, is there, let me see. Let me see. Mikey, I just sent you something. Take a look at it. Is one you're not possessing any firearms or any other dangerous weapons. Also, sir, you do not have contact with the Christine Williams. Christina Williams, that means no person to person contact, no contact with third parties, no phone calls, no emails, no text messaging. Also, you do not to have any contact with Miss Williams' uh, address right. on Tillman in the city of Detroit. Do you understand all that, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell me if that being said, uh, the charges are from a couple of days ago. They are assaultive. I don't have key to history. Let's see. I have a firearms conviction. Uh, let's see. Council Vincent, uh, please let me know. Does he have any KPSs, pending cases? Um, in addition to what I think is on the half, judge, he has pled previously to a, a half second offense notice as a result of a 2020 controlled substance case. Um, he was jailed on that case for almost a year. Is that all that he has as suppliers? Uh, as well as that, CC, as well as that CCW judge. That's what I have. So you don't have anything else? Um, no, I mean that puts us almost to 2022, but I don't have anything before or after judge. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to tell me about, uh, uh, Mr. Allen? Um, well, there's actually a lot I want to tell you regarding. Did they come back, Mike? The court is going to give the opportunity for them to file the written motion to do so, if necessary. Um, I'm not saying that that's what they're going to do but give that opportunity so i'm going to adjourn these proceedings for the motion as well as sentencing i'll set both at the same time um for to march my next sentencing march 13th and i want a special time so that all right march 13th at 3 p.m. for a continuation of the proceedings. I have directed uh, counsel that everybody needs to be in person at that proceeding. 
All right. Bond will continue. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Governor. That way I can throw you in jail off. Um, I mean, still, if you decide to try to do that again. Well, there Thank you have you. it. Okay. So we, we did a little time killing to get there, but uh, that, that makes sense. He's, he's going to file a motion to to uh, withdraw the plea. And uh, I guess I guess we're coming back on March 13th. I see jail in his client's future. Not a ton. Not a ton, but he's he's that that was why why the judge was going through this whole thing. He's saying, look, this is this is usually a failure to stop would usually be a fine or something like that, or get pitched for you know, in a plea with another charge or something something like that. But given the circumstances of this case and the fatalities, uh we need to sentence this one differently and that's why i went through that 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 whole bit the, the defense attorney didn't like it i understandably he wants to take the position oh my client didn't didn't do anything they they got they got in an accident and then and then uh you know this just happened he called 911 eh, your client got busted lying to 911. the judge I, is familiar with this scenario. i can agree with that but he client. wasn't charged with that was he mikey so you know and and i i think that them fleeing i, I don't know probably it was probably a contributing factor to the second accident and and therefore sentencing in this case i mean you're gonna be within the guidelines of what he pled to you're not you're not you know he's not sentencing him on a on a manslaughter charge or something like that because he didn't plead to that but you can sense him within what he pled to at the high end that's where the, that's where the judge was leaning i don't i don't see why you can't do that i i see where you can argue against it and say oh you know it's the second accident he ple didn't plead to that or whatever but it's it's certainly within the judge's discretion the way i see it so that ought to be interesting. That ought to be interesting. All right. All right, Mikey. Thank you. I can definitely see both sides, but I'd have to defer to you as our good lawyer in chief that visits us here on from day one. And with that, we'll have one last fight and then we'll call this a day here on from day one. So like, share and subscribe, be kind to of one another and release the Kraken as Heidi has one last fight tonight here on from day one.